you all see it, right? <laughs> you can speak, yeah, <laughs> only some of you. Okay, so uh, thank you for joining uh, our webinar, uh, How Synamics Uses AI to Protect Your Network. So you all know me, I'm Dr. Avi Cheskel, Synamics co-founder and CTO. And uh, my specialization is really about um, this intersection between AI and cybersecurity. And this is what we're doing in Synamics, um, inventing a new field on a daily basis, the combination of AI with network samples for cybersecurity and specifically for network security was never done before, not in the academy, not in the industry. We're the, the very first um, in, in this field. We're inventing this new field and we, we keep innovating in it on a daily basis. Um, all of these seven patents, four papers in the top academic conferences of, of this domain. And uh, we keep raising the bar all the time. So today um, in this webinar, I will share with you one of the most significant technologies we developed in Synamics, um, which enable us to predict cyber attacks before they hit in, a, in an agnostic way without spending you know, weeks and months of tailoring our models um, in each new network and without um, spamming you all with tons of false alarms or anything like you know, other more legacy kind of uh, solutions. And um, this, this approach that I will present to you is based on one of our first patents and also one of our first papers. And we will get into it in a, in a few moments, but let's just um, recall together what's, what's our problem. And, and guys, uh, feel free to you know, send questions in the meantime in the chat. And um, after my presentation, we will probably have some time to, to answer some of these questions and um, we'll take it from there. So just feel free to, to send any questions in the meantime. Okay, so the challenge, what's the, the challenge we are confronting with um, as you feel it on, on a daily basis, networks are becoming more and more complicated, more and more complex with this exponential rise in the traffic volumes, in the number of devices, number of endpoints, traffic volume, data volumes, with this messy mix of architecture between on-premise, private cloud and public cloud. And there is just no way, no way to collect, to process, to analyze each and every packet all the time from this entire network. It's impossible, no one can do it. Not to mention all of these exotic technologies as I, meant, as I call them, like, you know, the IOTs, the IIOTs, the medical IOTs, the, camera, the smart cameras, the, um, you know, the, the OT devices, which all of these technologies that just make the problem even more complicated because all of these devices, all of these exotic devices, um, which the proportion is, is becoming uh, bigger and bigger um, with, with each and every year, um, they, they just don't allow us to run any agent or any solution on them. So today they are just, become, they are just left as a big blind spot that no one can, can really even look into. And with the Synamics approach, we're solving both of this. Um, both of these significant issues. We cover the entire network for the first time end to end on the very small samples we, that we collect with the AI approaches that we will discuss one of them right now. And also we are able to go from the gateways through the assets down to the endpoints. All of the network is being covered end to end. Nothing is left behind anymore. No matter if it's IT, IoT, OT, you know, we have um, many networks that are have, that they are the mix of this this three or just two of the three and all together and with a high proportion of devices exotic devices that cannot be monitored or covered in any other way and for the first time they get this full coverage security and visibility um, end to end with the dynamic approach. Okay, so sampling um, because of this. Um, problems I mentioned because of the, the exponential rise of traffic volumes and data volumes and the complexity of uh, the, the the network architecture. We we can't rely anymore on TCP dumps, um, you know, of the entire network as we could have done very early on, like more than uh, you know two decades ago. Just collect all the TCP dumps of the entire network, spam, spanning, mirroring, tapping all of these names just see all the traffic all the time. It's, it's, it's something that was very 
easy to, done, to be done um, in the earlier days. Um, now it's just impossible. It doesn't make any sense anymore. And instead, there are three other kinds of, roughly speaking, three other technologies. So the first one, as you can see here, the second by code is SNMP, um, Simple Network Management Protocol. We're all familiar with it, very widely deployed protocol, um, always there, whatever gateways you have, very low network overhead. The problem is that SNMP contains only very, very few attributes, very volumetric bits, packets counts, and you, you can't really do much from, from SNMP uh, alone. It's, it, it doesn't provide you any real information about the network. The, the, the second alternative is IP flows. Now, this, I, I distinguish between IP flows and sample IP flows. And this is a significant distinction because IP flows, you know, the net flow, the S flow, IP fix of the world, um, some of them enable you uh, to collect summarization of the entire packets, then the 100% of the, the network data. Now, while it's a good trade-off between SNMP and TCP dumps, again, we get into the same problem. We can't use summarization like the 100% of all the IP flows all the time. It's not applicable and we can't work with it in either. So we, we left with the third alternative, which in Synamics we leverage for the first time into the cybersecurity world, into the network detection response world. And this is the sampled IP flows, sample net flows, sample S flow, sample IP fix and all, all and the rest. Flow summarization, but of only very small percentage. And our default is like 1%. And, you know, we, we go uh, much below it, even, you know, with, with our largest networks, large, largest data centers that we support, for example, et cetera. And for the first time, this is applicable. It can work with any network size, any network environment, very negligible processing cost, no privacy issues, very important because the samples doesn't contain any payload or any packets data at any moment. Only the IP headers, only the metadata is, is contained. So there is no sensitive or private information at any moment um, being sent, stored, collected, analyzed by Synamics completely, completely, extremely non-risk, non-intrusive. And very importantly, it's a standard built-in capability. Every network device, physical, virtual, legacy cloud, they all support it. And this is, as you know, <laughs> what we leverage for the first time, getting this very small samples from the entire network all the time and employing our AI approaches to learn from them about the entire network. So the big problem, how to learn from 1% samples on the 100%, how to detect cyber attacks for 1% samples, right? This, this sounds like magic. And uh, we, I, I heard it so many times. And this is the big problem, and this is what we do. So what I will show you today is, um, one of the Synamics key technologies, um, uh, we, we call it uh, autoencoder losses normalization. And what we did here um, was to invent a new approach for autoencoders. Autoencoders, as, as I will um, introduce it in a moment, is a very well-known deep learning framework for anomaly detection. Um, but for the first time, what we did was to, to add the normalization on top of the autoencoders outputs, which by normalizing these losses of different networks, of different clients, of different environments, and um, by forwarding this normalized loss to what we call our global detection model, we were able for the first time to provide a generic and agnostic threat prediction model, which can work for different networks, different environments in a, in a generalized way and start work immediately after onboarding. Some of you already saw it and witnessed it, you know, in the minute after onboarding, the hours after onboarding and provide the real meaningful ins and insights of attacks and threats and anomalies in a completely generalized way without this enormous, you know, uh, work um, workload from, from the user about fine tuning, customizations, thing, all, all this stuff that other solutions require you to do. And this is a really interesting approach. Um, as I mentioned, we got a cognition from the Academy for inventing this new concept, really new AI framework. We got a cognition from the um, IP um, perspective with this uh, patent about it. And 
as I mentioned, it's an it's a approach, a novel approach um, that provide us with a way to compare apples to apples between different networks. Some of you may may maybe uh, re remember me saying it's like language translation for cybersecurity because with this autoencoder's lot of normalization, we compare between we, we for the first time we are able to transform every network to one single framework after this normalization, right? So we we are going from the raw space of the different networks, which are very different one from the other in their behaviors, in their environments, in the top talkers, in everything, in the volumes even. And we are going with this transformation into another space, which is the academic word for it is a non-parametric invariant distribution because it's it enables us to go into a single framework, um, which is common to all of the networks that we see and to to reveal this underlying patterns that preceding attacks and threats are normally in a completely generalized and agnostic way. Okay. Um, I think I discussed everything I wanted in this slide. So let's continue. The motivation for our approach here was, um, or maybe the, the essence of this approach is a very interesting transfer learning technique. Now, some of you may be familiar with transfer learning with uh, applying model, you know, a deep learning model uh, that was uh, trained on one um, tr data or, or one um, specific problem and transforming it into a different problem, completely different domain maybe, um, different data maybe. Um, but here we, we, we took this transfer learning uh, idea into an unexplored area of uh, going from one network environment into a different network environment and getting being able to com to compare between them in a generalized agnostic and generic way, which is this is the the crux of this approach, the ability of eventually to come up with these pre-trained global models and to start to provide value right away upon the onboarding. So. Um, the idea again is the normalization of the autoencoder losses of the different networks, and the the, the, the arch this architecture enable this tr this transfer learning architecture that we developed that we invented here enables us to utilize knowledge that we learned in one network into different networks, or from our lab, or from our or from our um, simulations or all of the hundreds of networks that we saw or uh, whatever um, simulation we, we run in the lab into this new network that we just onboarded. Um, and to, to be able to, to start and, and um, understand what's going on in this new network right away upon onboarding with no uh, tedious pre-training or um, training from scratch. So, the proposed approach consists of three main stages. We have an autoencoder model for the client, for the specific network um, that we onboarded. For example, we have a global detector model, um, which is working um, on the, the normalized losses that it receives from the autoencoder um, that I just mentioned. And if this global detector finds an anomaly, we, this is the, what I mentioned. So this is the first autoencoder. This is the normalized loss. This is the global detector. And if there is an anomaly uh, found detected by the global detector, then we have the second pipeline um, going into the second autoencoder, which is specialized in understanding what's, what's the actual threat, what's the actual attack, what's the, the root cause of the attack, what's the, um, what's, uh, the actual uh, characteristics of the attack in order for us to mitigate it uh, either manually by sending you all the information around it for to taking action or automatically with our auto mitigation capabilities by integrating with third parties um, inside um, the client network and um, using this generated root cause to take action and close the loop autonomously. So, um, just to, to emphasize again, the differences between this unique approach and the previous literature in this domain. The main differences are threefolded. First, 
Previous approaches did not study a sample setting where we only have small part, very small, radically small part of the network data. This is the very first, the, maybe the most important uh, distinguish and uh, uniqueness of the Senex technology and specifically in, in this approach. Second, the autoencoder and the global model are trained one after the other, which is creating the basis and, and enabling actually, this is the enabler for the transfer learning I mentioned earlier, for transfer, transferring the model knowledge from one network into another, from one environment into the other, between IT, OT, IOTs, and all together, and different network sizes and volumes, and um, being able to, to work in a generalized way on, on all of these um, different frameworks. And third, the anomaly detection is based on a single global model. So we don't have a separate detector for each and every client network, for each and every network that we onboarded, like the majority, the great majority of uh, legacy solutions today. And it's significant because it means we continuously learn, continuously evolve. Our models, our global models are becoming more and more expert as they go from each and every new network that they see, from each and every new simulation that we run, becoming better, better expert all the time and keep learning and evolving. And um, it means um, from, from the other side, it means they're also very expert at recognizing normal behaviors. So this is why you don't see this tons of false alarms that you, you might uh, experience in other legacy solutions. So let's drill down a bit into the approach. Um, our input, as you all know, we have this, uh, this five tuple flows basically with some additional um, IP headers um, fields around them. So in the very basic, we have this five tuple flow source IP, which talks with some destination IP over some source port, desk port, protocol, sending some, some number of packets in between, some number of bits or bytes in, 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 in between in a specific timestamp. This is a very basic, this is like the atomic unit of the dynamics input. And um, on top of this, we add all kinds of additional um, um, IP headers metadata that we collect from the samples and we enrich it with additional information um, from um, the dynamics um, different engines and different integration and different uh, either third parties or in-houses, uh, for example, reputation and intelligence and um, all kinds of inf additional information we use. The second introduction slide is about autoencoders. So the, the whole idea in autoencoders is to try and train a model that understands the patterns in the data. And the way to do it is um, to send lots of, to, to show lots of um, normal, uh, or let's say benign in, in our case, examples to, to this model and forcing the model to, to try and understand some underlying patterns inside the data. And the way to, to force it to do it is by having this bottleneck layer right here. You see, so we have the input where we just show the, mod the, the autoencoder all kinds of normal benign examples. And here the bottleneck means we reduce, we, we um, implicitly reduce the dimension of the data. You see going from, for example, a vector of uh, six dimensions into three dimensions and forcing the autoencoder to lose some kind of information, but still, um, hoping for him to, to, to try and, and learn what's going on inside the, 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 the data itself, how to um, work with three, with just three uh, parameters and understand something about the six parameters. And um, the way we do it is by having this output layer and um, training the autoencoder to, 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 to do his best in reconstructing the, the examples that were given to him, were shown to him with this, um, having this bottleneck reducing the dimension of the data and uh, suffering some kind of uh, um, information uh, of, of um, information, uh, losing some information in between, in the moving between the input layer to the bottleneck, but still 
um, getting better and better in, in reconstructing something which is similar as much as it can be to the actual uh, training examples that were shown to him. So after we have a trained autoencoder, which is very good at knowing these patterns in the data that is shown lots of examples and is uh, forcingly um, losing some information, but still is able to reconstruct the, the original data um, in, in a very uh, good way, then we can use this autoencoder for anomaly detection. And the vanilla way is just to show the autoencoder new examples. Some of them would be benign. Some of them will be, for example, in our case with attacks data and to ask the autoencoder to reconstruct them. So the autoencoder will get this examples, will uh, we'll use this uh, bottleneck and we'll try to reconstruct them again. But then, and this is the, 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 um, the most important thing to understand, for normal data, for normal examples, um, the autoencoder, because it's, it's so well trained on, on, on this data in this domain, will be able to reconstruct them very good. So the, what we call the loss, the difference between the prediction um, of, of the re reconstruction that the autoencoder made and the actual, the actual uh, data that, is, that uh, was shown to him, this loss would be very low. But in case of an anomaly, this loss would be very high because the autoencoder will, will fail to reconstruct it um, the way he, um, he was able to reconstruct all the normal um, legitimate examples because they are so different than all the examples that the autoencoder was fed in um, during the training. And this is the entire idea behind autoencoders. Now, this is the vanilla autoencoders. Okay, this is not a new thing. And uh, this, this is a very well-known, very popular approach uh, for anomaly detection in all domains. But for the first time with, in Synamics, we introduced this display right here, the loss normalization. So we use the, the, the autoencoder, we train the autoencoder on the patterns um, in the network uh, from the, this uh, IP headers and five tuples information that we collect from the samples. But then we normalize the different losses of the autoencoders from different networks, from different clients, from different environments. And we use this normalizer in order to, to go from the specific network into this um, single framework uh, that we call the network blueprint that I mentioned earlier, this um, domain invariant distribution. Now, the normalization itself is less interesting, I think. Um, but before we continue to the features, um, I just want to, to emphasize it again because this is a very delicate um, idea. So what you see here is an autoencoder um, being um, trained to, to learn patterns in the network. Now, this part is the interesting one. We normalize the losses, the autoencoders from different networks, from different environments into one single framework, one single distribution. And here, when we look on the, the normalized, when we look on the outputs, the normalized losses looks the same for small network and big network, for IT or OT or IoT, for whatever different um, environments we look at. And the, the key here for understanding is that the losses um, being normalized uh, then show the Synamics global model exactly if the patterns now are preceding an attack, a threat, an anomaly, or they're just preceding some normal behavior. And um, by taking these losses and sending them and forwarding them into the global model, this is exactly how we are able with this approach to come pre-trained uh, upon immediately upon, after onboarding and start to provide value and insight, insightful detection um, into anomalies and attacks and threats in the network. So um, you probably remember we have two autoencoders. We have autoencoder one and we have autoencoder two. Autoencoder one is um, this the one we use uh, for detecting anomalies, and autoencoder two is the one we use for um, classifying uh, the anomaly. In case autoencoder one already uh, detected an anomaly, we will use autoencoder two for the actual 
um, classification of the, of the attack or the threat and in order to derive all of its information and the root cause and whatever, um, what, what actually happened there in order to mitigate the attack. So for autoencoder one, we, um, we have a much more global, much more robust uh, framework because it should specialize in the actually anomaly detection. And um, what the, the difference from autoencoder two is that autoencoder two is only being used in case that there is an anomaly and we want to understand what is this anomaly about. So it must be much more local, much more robust much more uh, descriptive and be able to, to distinguish between different ports, for example, and protocols and different behaviors in the, the actual network in order to, um, to generate the, the, much, the, the, the specific root cause information we need in order to mitigate the attack. And then we have the global models. Um, so from the autoencoders, we normalize the loss and this normalized loss are then being sent to the global anomaly detector, um, which its own pur purpose in life is to, to detect attacks or uh, to, to distinguish between attacks or normal behavior, normal traffic um, in this generalized way, in an agnostic way, and to keep learning and evolving all the time because Think about it, every new network, every new simulation that we run, we can use this normalized losses in a generic way and know, okay, this gen these losses are preceding a DDoS attack or DOS attack or web attack or CNC or just preceding like a, a backup or sync or, or whatever normal behavior. And similarly, equivalently, we have the, uh, the, in addition to the global detector, we have the global classifier, which is, um, working on is getting as inputs the out the normalized losses of autoencoder two, and is being used for the actual classification and generation of the root cause information. And this is the entire method. Um, again, this is only one of the Synamics technologies. As I mentioned, um, we to date we published in our patents and in our papers uh, three three of our um, approaches. This is one of them, the autoencoder loss of normalization. Another one, maybe in the next webinar, we can discuss it is uh, the graph neural network approach that we use in order to transform the network into um, a graph, which um, we learn the normal behaviors for each and every endpoint in this graph and um, by, by assigning some uh, vector that representing the, the behaviors and the ports and the protocols and the communications of each and every endpoint, internal, external versus the public world, um, which is this approach, the graph neural network approach is, is um, the one we we use very successfully um, for detecting attacks and threats on the on the endpoints without running any agents on, on them. So this is something some of you already experienced and saw in real life. And um, we, we have, of course, other approaches uh, and that we haven't yet published um, and they're still in the progress of the patents and other papers in the making. But again, this is just one of our approaches, one of our technologies, the autoencoder loss of normalization that I wanted to share with you in this webinar. So we have features, we have the autoencoder one and two, we have the autoencoder itself, we have the loss of normalization right here, and we have the global anomaly detector and equivalently the global uh, anomaly classifier. Okay, so um, simulation. So, you know, we of course um, wouldn't uh, use like uh, for, for the publication, I mean, for, for, you know, for the paper here, uh, we would never use, you know, um, the, 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 you know, real data. What we did here was to use all kinds of, um, publicly available data from different networks that are being used for academic research. And we, we, we showcase several things. What The first thing we showcase here is how the normalization um, is indeed transforming us into a similar statistical distribution between very different networks uh, in sizes, in applications, in, in environments, in everything. So it, it shows how the, the normalization really works, really did, uh, really uh, do what it uh, intended to. 
And then more specifically, this is, for example, um, the, the network layout, um, some of uh, the very popular, um, very popular data sets, um, which are used for benchmarking in cyber security research. Um, and we compared the Synapse approach into Kitson, what you see here, which was considered state of the art um, before Synamics and relies on autoencoders as well, uh, but not, not, of course, not uh, normalizing the losses of the autoencoders as we do, but more vanilla kind of autoencoders as, as I showed you in the introduction. And just detects anomalies when the reconstruction error is too high. And this is the table summarizing the simulations we've done comparing us and Kitsum. So you see several things here on this table. Um, we have the unnormalized 18. So it's unnormalized losses of the approach. Okay, it means without normalizing them. Okay, the, the full approach is of course with the normalization, the normalization of the losses on one of the data sets. And here you can see normalization of the uh, losses on two data sets, on UNB12 and 18. And we compared it into Kitson right here. So we can see several interesting things. We can see how the normalized model right here is out of right here. This is our normalized model. And this is Kitson. We can see how it's outperforming Kitson in each and every metric. And you can see the F1 score, which is like a one, um, one, one number uh, between zero and one, the higher the better, that um, encapsulate into it um, the accuracy, the precision, the, the false negative, false positive, everything together. And you can see that we almost three times better than Kitson, um, in, in, which is significant. This is very significant. And then when we add more data and we let our autoencoders to, to, to see more network patterns, which is as I mentioned, this is uh, really um, what's going on in real life because our autoencoders, our global models, you know, they see new networks on a daily basis, new and new and more clients, more simulations, more everything. And you can see that with more data, the results improved. So we actually, from 0 0.45, we went into 0 0.55. And this is exactly the transfer learning in reality how it improves from each new network, from each new simulation. And think about that this is just from two networks, from two data sets, right? In reality, our F1 score, you can expect is very close to one. And uh, you, you, you probably, uh, you know, felt it um, and witnessed it um, in, in, in each of your networks, um, how the precision and the, the very high uh, accuracy of this dynamics technology, which is again in this in, in this specific approach, is based on this on this transfer learning, in this learning for and and uh, um, from each and new network that we see. Um, I want to show you also this one. This is really interesting. So, what we did here, we took some some uh, network behavior and we took some spike. You see this spike here. So, and we just duplicated this spike one time, two times, three times, four times, etc. in a in a completely artificial way. And we were interested to see if our AI will learn that, you know, one spike is normal because it was, you know, uh, completely benign, completely normal, you know, behavior, just, you know, regular spike is, you know, for normal business uh, spike uh, in this specific application. But more spikes, you know, uh, we're not normal. And we wanted to see if our AI will be able to learn it autonomously. And this is exactly what happened here. You see, our model was able to distinguish between a short peak, which is normal, and a longer peak, which is an anomaly. And um, it, this, is, this is something that when you look at it from academic perspective, um, this is very significant because it shows you, this is an evidence that the, our AI really learned this pattern in, in, in this case and to distinguish between short peak into long peak and to distinguish between it in a completely AI-based way because um, it's not just a threshold uh, issue because of course it's the same values, right? Between the short peak and the longer peak. And, um, but instead, this is indeed the pattern itself that played here 
um, the, the rule of uh, distinguishing between normal behavior and detection. And, and I really like to, to show this, this example as well. So um, just really two last slides. Um, so something which is very interesting in, in the academic world um, is the ability to defend against adversarial attackers. And advers for example, you know, very sophisticated attackers that leverage machine learning and deep learning approaches in their attacks, um, which is something that, for example, being done by, um, you know, state level um, attackers. And this is something that the majority of the legacy solutions are completely crippled um, against it because it's much more sophisticated than uh, what they've been trained against. And it's really interesting to see how Synamics is by definition, by nature, robust against such attackers. And the very first, um, the very first explanation for it is that sampling, as we do, provides a built-in countermeasure because the attacker cannot know what packets will be randomly sampled and what will not be sampled. So we all, so you know, then randomness is the best countermeasure against sophisticated adversarial attackers. And this is exactly, you know, this is the basis of Synamics, right? Second, an existing attacker, which is already in the network, cannot know what is the, the role losses, what is the normalized loss, what is the normalization technique, doesn't know anything about it. And, and third, the attacker cannot know when the solution, you know, when Synamics start to collect samples, for example. Um, and when it started, you know, um, be, because we don't have like deployment in the network, because we don't have appliances and agents, so the attacker cannot know when Synamics was actually deployed. Um, but the most important explanation is the, the first one, is our randomness um, countermeasure, which is the most efficient against adversarial attackers. So uh, to sum up, um, this is just one of Synamics novel AI-based approaches for um, cybersecurity, also encoded losses transfer learning, transferring the learning, the, the, no, the model knowledge from one network to another. And this is um, really interesting uh, because again, it's, it's a new AI concept that was not, uh, you know, that was invented by Synamics. Um, and you saw this, this is the paper which is based on and we have the, the, the patent as well uh, based on it. And you saw also some of the simulation study and the comparison with the, the recent state of the art and how we completely outperform it. And the bottom line here is again, samples are inevitable. We must sample. The networks are just too big today. They will continue to be much, much bigger in, in the future. We must sample because otherwise uh, there is no way to even start to, to see the entire network. But sample, sampling is also very challenging. Learning from 1% of the, on the entire data is very challenging academically and, in, in, and from the academic perspective and from the industry perspective. And this is why no one else is doing it. And Synamics, with our unique technology and um, approaches, we are able for, in the first, for the first time to solve it and to learn from the small samples on the entire network. And this is one approach I said we have other approaches we published and we have many approaches with it we haven't. And um, I hope that it gives you a bit more, um, you know, a bit more clarity about what we do, how we do things and why we're so unique. And as you witness uh, on a daily basis when using Synamics. So uh, I will stop sharing and I will now see if there are any questions in the Q&A and feel free to Right, any other questions that you may be interested in? So, um, yeah, I see some questions here. Um, let me, let me start. Um, okay, so the, the, the first question here asks about if this this approach that I showed you is only being used for on-premise networks or cloud networks, so just to, to clarify. So this approach 
as well as all of the ceramics technologies, they are, all of them are being used um, in, a, in a generic and agnostic way, as I mentioned, on all the different environments and networks that we see. Um, and we have, you know, we have clients which are on-premise only, uh, cloud, on, cloud native only, uh, hybrid cloud, everything. We have all of the mixes of everything, sizes and environments and everything. So yeah, the, the answer is definitely yes. Let me see. There is another question here. Oh, this one is really interesting. <laughs> I, hear, I hear it a lot. So um, this question asks, so how do you know that from this 1% samples, dynamics will not miss the attack? Okay, so this is a very good one. Um, you know, we... We are cyber professionals, right? And we know that cyber attack is not just one packet that you either sample or not. A cyber attack is much more than that. It's 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 a it's a process. It's a flow of events in the network. The you know the the infection from the outside world into a specific computer, for example, uh, just click someone clicked the wrong link. Then the lateral movement. Then, um, you know, the propagation internally, the attacker tries to map the network to find some more important places in, inside the network. Um, you know, sending keep lives and CNC outside, getting commands back until the actual attack is being launched with whatever it will be, DDoS, Transom, whatever. Now, this is a process of events. And because Synamics for the first time covers the entire network because we sample all the time from all of the networks, so we see the entire network, we have much more places to intervene, to see some, at least some of these um, events and the flows um, around the attack from the infection till the actual attack launch. And this is why um, the, the Synamics um, stamping-based approach is really giving us this significant advantage compared to any legacy approach that is based on, you know, placing the appliance on a specific area in the network, seeing all the network, but only, only, only in this very specific area, but, but and leaving the majority of the network, the great majority, like uh, according to surveys and studies and reports, 90% of each network, every network is just being left behind as one big blind spot, if not using dynamics, of course. And um, this is the huge shift with the sapping based support, which, as I mentioned, it's it's inevitable. We, you must do it. Let's see if there is other question here. So, um, I think this this were the two questions um, in the Q and A. Um, Caitlin, uh, do, do you want to? Caitlin? Yes. Hello. Do you want to wrap up? Yeah. Yes, well, if there's um, no more questions, I think that um, we can wrap it up here. So thank you everyone for coming today and we hope that you found it as insightful as I did. <laughs> So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.